terrible. Give me a second here to get everything started up. I fix the restream chat so it's linked to the right stream. How's everyone doing today? Mia Evan Findan Chiaps, how's it going? Gray Seven Now, thank you for the follow. Bear with me here for a moment. There we go. Chat's showing up now. Okay, let me get some lights on in here. I need to change that restream chat. It is... I, I noticed in some of the VODs it was a little uh, hard to read. Scuba, good afternoon from Scotland. Afternoon to you as well. Hoping for a surprise bundle sale. I certainly hope so. Uh, Alachi, Isaba, Whiskey Tango, how's it going? It should go, I mean, in theory, this bundle should be in the, the, the mud store here in about five minutes. So let me get some lights on in here. Hope oh, I charged both of them up. I know I need to get a better lighting solution still. I'm still rocking these these two little lights. I mean they they work. They were like 15 bucks off Amazon, but definitely not the most ideal. Especially when I can't find where I set them. Yeah, Chell, I just saw you did that two mil solo. Very nice. Waiting for the PlayStation servers to come back up. But yeah, you guys had a patch today. Yeah, you guys got the, the 14th bundle. Now I'll tell you, if you don't want to buy the 14th bundle, the, the most important ship to get out of there is the Iwani, and you can purchase it on its own. And remember, your giveaways are going to be live alongside the update today. Jonathan, how's it going? Chris, short, sub commander. Yeah, I mean, while we're waiting here, I can show you guys the 2-7. The um, so let me pull that up here. Game is balanced. I know. Okay, videos. Scuba, thank you for the sub over on Twitch. Very much appreciated. So this is the 2.7 mil uh, do run I did last night. This was not like fully optimal. Like in a split run, we can definitely get a bit more out of it. Um, my piloting was a little rusty here, but and I didn't have a real time parser up. I I, I forgot to reopen it. But this was 2.7 left right. Again the the. Start was even a little sloppy. This was also just a four man. I, I left went down so fast I didn't have my evasive backup. I was like, what the hell? I was not ready for that level of speed. I had four four Wani's on me right there, four Wani consoles. Yeah, everything just just was dying so fast. Um, I thought the Pavo, the, the Proton buff was there when I looked. Yeah, this was not the, the smoothest run, but it was still like 2-7 left, right, do.
Um, sorry, I'm catching up on chat here. If I missed anyone, you know, feel free to repeat your message. Danad, how's it going? Game is balanced, I know. Terrible shilling stream? Absolutely, Warp Core. Duka? Uh, Evan, from the 14th bundle, would you say the main two ships to get there is the Iwani and the Atlantis? Yes, that's that's the two most important ships from that bundle. And the Iwani is by far, like, if you can only get one, you get the Iwani. You may not fly the Iwani, but the accessories on it are so damn good that not having them is going to be a limiting factor moving forward. EJ, how's it going? Still not there? Just a few more minutes short. Cat? Samantha. Yeah, hopefully they it should just show up here in a minute. Um, so in that run there was a dedicated tank. Maslin, how's it going? Um, yeah, there well there won't be a Romulan recruit event specifically. Instead it'll be um there will be a Delta recruit event probably starting up sometime in the next month or so. Isum, thank you for the follow. Hellfire, glad to help. What can I do build-wise to optimize the Atlas? Um, you know, I think there's probably been some builds posted for the Atlas on the Builds Discord, so I'd say to take a look around there. And, you know, look to see if people have anything posted for, for the Thry or the D9 also. There we go. And look, the, the full mega bundle is indeed 25,000 Zen. So reminder, if you're buying any Zen through the Epic Game Store, use code casual sav at checkout. That helps me fun helps me uh fund bundles like this. Okay, I'm buying the the pick three choice pack personally. And it is, it does say two epic tokens. Oh, there we go. Choice pack of dread through the ages. There we go. Centurion, how's it going? Uh, yeah, the Phoenix event should now be live also. Yeah, the Iwani absolutely is like the, the first ship people should get now. Okay, before I go any further with this, I am copying a box over to Tribble just so I can show what happens when you uh when you go for for the epic tokens with it. We're gonna take a look at that first, just because I want to show you know that this is actually giving two two epic tokens per selection. So I'm gonna copy this over to to Tribble quick as soon as I can find my character in the list here. Yeah, a bundle sale alongside this would have been nice. We are witnessing history here, friends. Yeah. Turn on the Marion. The, the Marion, if you ever flew the Courage, it's it's a it's like a, the science mode of the Courage, and it has a hangar bay. XX series. Thank you for the follow. When the PS servers come back up, I'll be buying the 14th straight away. I'm getting the Marion because I use the Courage for side nuking and high-end infected runs. So the, the Marion bringing in a bay, another Bay of Type 7s will be beneficial for that environment. I would say that if you are if you don't typically do a lot of um, like side torp stuff, then the Marion probably is not going to be the most appealing to you. I do think the Marion is the best ship in this bundle. Oh, it's not over on Tribble yet. Oh, rip. The, uh, the Muds bundle isn't over on Tribble yet, so that's unfortunate. Oh, well. If 
But yeah, you can see here, if you go with the choice pack, you can get six Epic Phoenix tokens from this if you wanted. But for me, I'm going for the three ships. The 23rd Century Dreadnought Bundle, the 26th Century one, and the Marion. And there we go. Now, people have asked, you know, do you actually get all three ships? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over to a different character and I'm going to show that you do get the you do have the ability to get all three ships on every character on your account if you wanted. The throne is going to be retired. Yes, it, that's exactly what it means, Chaps. So to reclaim the ships from the mud store, you'll just go to the ships tab and you'll see the, the ones that you selected show up in there. So if I want to get all three variants of the 23rd century uh, dreadnought ships, I just hit the claim button three times and then I can go in, pick each of the ships here. And just like that, you know, I've got all, all three of these ships. And now I've got the DPRM on account wide unlock. Martin, how's it going, man? No, the Dread Bundle's not going to be on console for probably another month. Yeah, console players should have a, a ship sale, at least on the, the new ships right now. Um, and there's also a Dilithium uh, bonus still event going on over on console, I think I saw. Okay. I have a month to wait for DPRM. Okay, I'm going to head down to ground here. Oh, the throne is just um, what I had my courage named. The The courage sort of reminds people of, of a toilet. So I, I just was calling it like, you know, the porcelain throne basically as a joke. Oh, I need to... Pop the Marion here. And I want to grab some of those E6X upgrade tokens. So I have 186 ultra rares and 195 very rares here. And sure enough, there we go. So I'm going to rip these all open here. Yeah, the stream just started. I just wanted uh, to go live, pick up the, uh, the new stuff, you know. Pick up as many of the experimental ship upgrade tokens as I could. 46 ought to last me a little bit. Captain Cisco, thank you for the sub. Very much appreciated. Yeah, basically the pity system in STO works on a per character basis, so... You always want to make sure that you're opening on the same character. Should turn the camera to a little bit there. I need to move the, the light over to the right. I found with some recordings recently that I uh, was accidentally like blocking myself out a little bit. It seems really dark in here. not perfect but whatever um those tokens lasted so much longer before x2 yeah do i think a zen sale will happen before the end of the 50 percent bundle sale i don't know okay i'm gonna go upgrade the lexington here beautiful I don't remember what other ships I recently have picked up that I would need to upgrade. Kathy, thank you for the 10 US dollars. Very much appreciated. Happy birthday. Not till tomorrow. But thank you. Uh, yeah, the European Union does have some different laws with regards to these gambling mechanics like this. So I do expect with DECA taking things over, that we'll probably see some things change as time goes on. I 
DPS Holy Grail item can now be account wide unlocked. Yeah. My hope is that the pity system is a bit more exposed and a bit more, a bit more friendly than what it is right now. Um, you know, something like what they have over in Neverwinter. I think that'd be good for the game. Yeah, at a minimum, I think they'll have to expose the uh, the drop rate. Just going through what what ships have I picked up recently that I want to go in and upgrade. Yeah, the, this is the courage. Um, we were joking around calling this the the throne because some people think it looks like a toilet. From some angles, it's a joke, basically. I should upgrade the Akira. Thank you, Firebird. I think there will still be gambling. It's just that, like other games, they'll have to expose the odds. Is what I would hope to, to see. Oh, let's get that rampart upgraded. I did end up picking up a Devar because I thought the trait would be good for solo runs, and then they uh, proceeded to um, change the trait, like the, the patch afterwards, so now you will lose the stacks of crit severity it gives you when you die also, so they don't persist the entire time you're in the map. Again, I don't think the Devar is worth it for pretty much anyone, and also the console on this is sort of a joke. It, it takes 15 seconds for it to return foes to the location, so... If you have the funds to pick up the Devar and put a science build on it, and you're actually trying to use this, your enemies are probably dead in like three seconds, and this console takes 15 seconds to work. Bit of a dud. <laughs> what a disappointment there. Also, for those of you picking up the Awani that, that want another kit bash option, um, if you have a T5 uh, ship box lying around from Infinity, if you pick up the Mirror Heavy Cruiser Retrofit, that will give you another skin that you can use on the Iwani. It's it's this Mirror skin. It doesn't particularly look that great, but if you're someone that likes the customization options, you know that is another option out there for you. Uh, I think I've got most of my ships upgraded at this point. At least most of them that I care about. Okay. Any recommendations for what I should use the Epic uh, Phoenix Prize token for? Um, Domino's a good console still. Um, you know, the Protomatter Field Projector from the Lucari ship is still good for survivability. The uh, Bleen Plus Straw, the Breen Plus Straw for, for the Cold Hardy trait still has some use cases if you have procs for it on your build. How many X upgrades did I get? 40 something? What is the most efficient way to use Phoenix tokens to X upgrades? The the ultra rares are the best to convert, and I also will convert the uh, the very rares sometimes also. No elite applications. I'm sorry. I I think I may have. Oh, yeah, the Devar. I don't think there's any elite applications for the Devar trait. Every, in a, in a high-end environment, things die too fast for the Devar trait, or for the Devar uh, console, and the Devar trait only gives you the one stack every... one stack of crit severity every two minutes. Edolg is better? I, I agree. I agree. Dustin, how's it gone? Yeah, yeah, the, the Phoenix event is live right now. So if you have any that you want to convert, this is the time to do so. 
You can only do these conversions of the, the Phoenix tokens over to the experimental ship upgrade tokens during these Phoenix events. So if you have anything in there that you want, act fast. Um, yeah, red, if you're doing the flagship set, that console does work with that. Yeah. Is there a cheap way to get fleet ship modules when you complete a reputation? Um, when you get up to T6, you can get a mission to convert some tokens over to fleet ship module or to a fleet ship module, but you can only do that once per uh, reputation. What is the drop rate for an Epic Phoenix token? On average, it's like one out of 900. Yeah, I'm going to rip open some, uh, some more Phoenix packs right now. So let's do, let's do 850. Just take that down to. Let's do a hundred packs here. When you look at the math for what you get um, or like how, how, or how much each X upgrade cost during these Phoenix events. If you're opening enough of these Phoenix packs, it works out to be like a buck 60 per X upgrade. So this is much more cost effective than trying to go in and buy them, you know, right through the C store. The limitation though, is that these are bound to you. So you can't go and sell them on the, the player exchange if that's something you were hoping to do. Okay, there's another couple of upgrades. So like I just opened like eight bucks worth and I just got, you know, another five upgrades out of that. Plus I have another like 50 Phoenix upgrades I can go pick up. Yeah, open them on the same character, absolutely. You always, always do your opening on the same character. PlayStation is up. Nice. So yeah, that puts me at, I still have 40 of these experimental ship upgrade tokens left. So you can see there, I actually need to swap characters now. Is there a Zen bonus charge today? I haven't seen one. Um, let me check real quick. Doesn't seem like it. Uh, not that I'm seeing. But I do want to note if you're going through Epic, there is 10%. Oh, no, the 10% cashback's over too now. Okay, rip. So, yeah, there's no sales anywhere right now. They'll be scummy and start one tomorrow. That, that would be the cryptic way. Okay. I believe I need to pick up some of the, uh, the Awani pets on this character. Grab. How often does Zen go on sale? Uh, probably like once every two to three months. Would be the, the safe, safe guess. So yeah, when you pick up the Iwani too, um, you know, make sure to go get the elite version of the, the pets. The type sevens are really good. The amount of debuff that they bring in is just absurd. The, the amount of debuff that they bring in has pretty much devalued most other hanger pets in the game. And the nice thing with the Type 7s is they, they don't do much damage themselves, but you also don't need to worry about slotting a bunch of stuff to buff them. You just slot them, 
they're going to debuff things for you, and it's just going to increase the damage on the rest of your build. So the the Type 7s, just the, the amount of power creep with them is nuts. 20% ship sale on console? Yep. Um, I'm not using Radiolytics at all. Um, phasers are not the top performing energy weapon variant right now. Um, for for the stuff that I do, the, the plasma stuff really, really excels in the, the runs that I do. So I have not been uh, not been using the Radiolytics. I am like one, one Zen short, aren't I? Or like one Zen worth of dill. So these elite type seven shuttlecraft that you can pick up from your fleet once you have the Awani. Um, what makes them so special is that they have fire at will on them, attack pattern beta three, and then they have close and sensor pass, which is a lot of a lot of debuff also. So they have two debuff abilities on them. They have fire at will. They got beams on them. They just do a lot. They they spread a lot of debuff around. The the Awani, the, the Elite Type 7s, they don't do damage. What they do is they buff your damage. That's what makes them so impactful at a high level of gameplay is because you just slot these on a build and they're buffing you up. Like, you can get, uh, for, for a limited time, you're going to be getting six copies of Attack Pattern Beta 3 on all of your targets. Um, you're going to have the Close and Sensor Pass debuff on your, your foes also. That's just a huge amount of debuff. Um, I mean, you can try, I've, I've seen some people talk about trying one bay of them and like one bay of the, the normal pets you'd use. Um, personally, the, the thing I like with the type sevens is I can take all of the pet boosting stuff off my build, just slot the type sevens and then just focus on working on, you know, the or boosting up the, the main weapons on my ship or abilities that I'm trying to get damage from. You, you can basically for, forget, you know, trying to go in and slot a bunch of stuff to try and buff pets up. Just focus on buffing yourself up, slot these, and they're going to help you out even more. Um, Sandor, you're thinking about buying the MUDS bundle for the Durgath alone. The rest is kind of myth for me. Would it be worth buying the bundle for that? If you want, the thing is, okay, that is a promotional tier ship. If you want that on multiple characters, the MUDS bundle is the most cost-effective route to do so. And even, well, if you just want it for one character, you could get it with the event campaign, you know, later this year. But if you do want those ships on multiple characters, you want these other ships on multiple characters, the MUDS bundle is the most cost-effective way to do so. Um, Dustin, I was using uh, Malicious AI and I believe Tractor Beam. Tractor Beam counts for it, right? I, I think most of the fixes for that stuff should have been applied for you guys, Giant Dutch Viking. Yeah, I just, I, I think if you have the funds to, to pick up a ship and you were looking to pick it up, you know, the MUDS route's getting it on account wide unlock for not that much more expensive than what it would cost to get for a single character. So even if you were just, you know, if you were looking to put money into the game to to pick up just the Durgath, you know, you'd probably be spending about a hundred bucks to do that. Another 50-ish bucks can get you this MUDS bundle, or at least the pick three choice pack version of the MUDS bundle, that is giving you that and other things, you know, on account wide unlock. So just, you know, from, from a cost point of view, the MUDS bundle just makes the most sense there. No reason with that, the type seven, pretty much. You don't even, don't even really need that now. Because the fall is going to be up like at the same time as the beta, so. They they all have the exact same console. 
the, the Durgath, the Valkus, and the Enterprise J have the exact same console and trait. The, uh, the 23rd Century Dreadnoughts, the Atlas, the D9, and the Thry, those do have different traits and consoles. The traits are not anything to, to write home about. The, the consoles, you know, aside from the DPRM, the, the other two consoles aren't the most impactful, but that secondary shield one might be of use to, to some people. Get a Marion. There we go. Yeah, I think a lot of people still do. Enough that this game continues to be, you know, one of the top financial performers for, for Embracer. The two-piece set bonus for the 23rd. I mean, that's still a good two-piece. And if you have the, the legendary NX, you can do the DPRM plus the point defense bombardment console. That That's, that's a good two-piece combo there. Cannot be claimed a second time, unfortunate. Yeah, that's that is unfortunate, but that was expected. Go. Yeah. Just glad to have the Marianne finally on this character. So my intention with the Marianne, like, you can set this up as a more traditional, like, uh, I Torp type of build, but for me, I'm going to set this up with a side nuker set up for Infected, which is super specialized, and outside of side nuking Infected, it literally, the, the build will absolutely suck. So I would say if you're setting up the Marianne, you know, look at some of the, the more traditional side Torp setups out there. Um, the side nuke stuff that I'm going to end up putting on this myself again, will will not apply to most use cases. King, how's it going? Jose, definitely picking the bundle up when it hits console. Yeah, honest, you know, honestly, the, the entire mega bundle was 25 uh, K Zen, so 250 bucks. That That's a lot of money, you know, let, let's be clear. But like I said in the, the breakdown, you know, if there was, if you were looking at picking up the three ships, which is what I did for, for 150, but you look at the other, you know, the stuff in here, would you spend a hundred bucks on a bundle in the, the C store? If it had 10 ultimate tech upgrades, two Epic tokens, 50 keys, and the, uh, the two T6 coupons, I think most people would go out and pick that bundle up if it was available for a hundred bucks. So if you're going for the pick three choice pack, I do think there's also value to that entire mega bundle if the stuff is of interest to you. If I had 150 bucks in Zen and had to choose between the 14th bundle or the Dread Muds bundle, which would I go for? I, for me personally, for me personally, I, I I, I think with the 14th bundle, most people only need the Iwani and the Atlantis. Um, so if you do go for the 14th, I would wait for a proper sale on it. Um, but I, I think it really depends on what type of build you're doing. You know, do the ships in the in this Dread bundle appeal to you? You know, that's that's a big question there. The ships in the 14th bundle are better. The, the choice pack of Dread is more for, you know, do you want the console and the, the theme applications here? The Marion's like the only good ship stats wise. The, the Valkus is also fine. Um, but the, the Marion's the only ship here that really stands out as being like a good performer sh for, for the ship itself. And it's the ship that most people aren't going to care about. Yeah, 14th, I... I I, I do think I have to lean towards the 14th as being the more impactful for, for 
you know, day to day gameplay. It's just different use cases. The Disco Bundle will uh, will return. Uh, speaking of Psy Torp, Pals the Dauntless 2, I never picked it up. I, I just had no interest in it personally, so I, I can't really comment on it too much. Yeah, Vinny, it absolutely is. The, that's games as a service. They They are set up to get as much money as they can. UX upgrades move over on alts. Yeah, yeah. No, that giant Dutch Viking, if you upgrade a ship on one character, um, your other characters are going to be getting that upgrade also. You might have to go and hit the upgrade button at the, the shipyard, but it'll be free if you've upgraded that ship on an alt. Rodolfo, how's it going? Mystic. Steven, how's it going? Is the Atlantis that good? The Atlantis is a good beam overload platform. Well, okay. It's a good energy weapon platform. It is good for cannons also. I know Steven's going to comment if I, if I don't mention that. It, it, it's good for more than beam overload. It, it is legitimately a good CSV platform also if you want to use it for that. I'm missing a lot of things in chat here, so let's bring this over. Yeah, keep in mind with the MUDS bundles that the, the sales are a limited time, but they do pop up again at the same discount with the, the bundle sales that pop up every couple of months. So if you miss out on this sale, it will pop back up. I don't know where that notification was. Alt, Lexington, thank you for the, the, the raid there. How's it going? I think I got the shout out. How'd your stream go? Buzzy Wuzzy Bear, thank you for the follow. Richosi, thank you for the follow also. Okay, let me... Oh, Twitch chat. <laughs> Want the ugly Thry, I have the Atlas for DPRM, but it's not why I'm getting the bundle. Yeah. The Thry does also have that secondary shield uh, console, so that is like a, a nice team support type console. I fly Dual Beam Bank, D7, Merc Worker, Flight Deck Carrier, Torpedo, Legendary, Akira. The Durgath is not going to outperform any of those. It's going to be a fun ship to, to fly, but it's not going to outperform any of the ships you mentioned, Sandor. Yeah. Yeah, Red, there is a, a 2 times T6 token option in the Dread Bundle, yep. Alt. That is passed. Again, thank you for the raid. Very much appreciated. Hope you had a good stream. Enough Phoenix upgrades to make one ship a T6X2. Yeah, whichever looks the most appealing to you, Samantha. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, picking up the we well, picked up the new bundle and got a bunch of X2 upgrades. Everything launched on time as expected, so good so far. Yeah, you never do uh, Surgical Strikes 1. Uh, Surgical Strikes 1 is a DPS loss. You do Beam Overload 3 instead of Surgical Strikes 3. Or Surgical Strikes 1, I mean. You can only you should only use Surgical Strikes when you can run rank 3 of it. If you can't run rank 3 of it, you don't run it. That's basically the way I look at it. Yeah, Rodolfo, I think they should keep all the older MUDs bundles in. The TMP Atlas skin, yeah. Keith, how's it going? Um, Colonel Jansen, I don't recall. How's the energy level after a stream? Uh, it, it varies depending on the day. Giant Edge Viking. Bughole, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. The Dread Mega Bundle is really the best choice if one can get it. Wanted the J for a while now. What is my opinion on CSV beam overload hybrid setup with preferential targeting? Um, 
you could just do a beam overload setup and have CSV on there as a trigger. You don't actually have to have any uh, cannons on your build for, for that preferential targeting trait. Was going to buy it, but Alt has convinced me otherwise. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, the DPRM is a good console, but I, I don't want... I don't want people to have an expectation that it's going to, you know, go in and completely change the, the game. It's not. It's a good console, but you're not suddenly going to do a million DPS by getting that console. Like, it, that there's other things getting in the way of, you know, higher DPS. Like uh, ability activation, piloting, those are the biggest things. The build synergy. Going to adjust... Yeah, I wish that I wish that they would adjust CSV one to be an instant ability. Absolutely. I wonder how much real money it would take to buy everything in the C store. Someone's probably calculated it. You can't do one mil with one console. No. Well, te technically that's not true. I take that back. The Nadarian, the ship that everyone loves so much. Um, that actually has the HSE record right now. And with setups that are boosting up that console quite a bit, the, the Jelly Mode uh, console, um, people have gotten almost 2 million DPS from that console now in high-end high runs. The Section 31 ship that has the drones detaching, the, the Command Heavy Battlecruiser, I would do that as a torp build. You could do it as cannons also, though. It works for both. Only want the EPRM for my jelly. Oh no. The DPRM's good. It is a good console, but like I said, it's not going to completely change the game for you. Ah, uh, Keith. Oh, doing good. For me, this bundle was worth it because I wanted the Marion and the Enterprise J variants, you know, on on all my characters is nice, and I did need DPRM on two characters, so I had multiple reasons that this bundle was benefiting me. That's why I picked it up. Yeah, you can do the Enterprise J as a beam build. Yeah. Yepers. I need to grab the, the ship here. Give me that DPRM. And I don't even have ship slots on this character, unfortunate. You have the Marion on a character for a year or so, can't say you're impressed. Yeah, it's it's a different type of ship there. Definitely not one that's gonna appeal to, to everyone. It's it's a good side torp platform, but if you're not into that side torp play style, probably not gonna get much out of it. Um, so that character is in a onesie and Nick was doing a stream a week or so back and he wanted us all on Ryza to take a picture and the character just never moved from that spot. There we go. I got deep here. I'm on this character now. And let's see. There we go. Legendary Avenger sale. Might be a while for that. Have I seen the, the pylon and the cable on the Golden Gate Bridge on Earth? Yeah, I saw. I did see that on the uh, the Stow subreddit. Let me go show that to people. Oh no. Cthulhu. I had a friend decide what to spend my 15k on after not buying the 14th, so it's DPR on Big Boy Ships the Marion. Yeah.
Okay, let's beam down to Starfleet Academy. Um, so Steven, it, it's been a month since I put that build on that character, and in the time since, I've been too lazy to move over a, another Plasma Dual Heavy Cannon to that character. You made the subreddit post, gotcha. Yeah, I saw that. So, the issue here... Oh, what the hell? Apparently, if you get too close to the railing, it just sends you back. But if you look right up there... You can see it doesn't align up. Epic Phoenix pack. Uh, the Domino console off the Majoran ship is still good. The Cold Hearted trade off the Breen Plus Trawl. If you have Ox to Bat or Pilot abilities on your build, that's a good trade to run. Um, the Lucari ship for Protomatter Field Projector is good. Um, did I do a build for the Deuter stat? I did, and I was extremely unimpressed with that ship. I, I still am very disappointed with it. What is your dream scenario for a, a new legendary ship at this point in Stow? Um, just that it has a lot of accessories on it that are good. Ideally, a good spec combo. Got an Endorian's head blocking the, the screen now. Um... But the big thing is, is that it's making a bunch of traits easily, uh, easily farmable on alts. Like going in and um, leveling up a bunch of different ships for traits. It's nice if I can compress that down with a legendary ship. Axel, how's it going? Yep, the Phoenix. The uh, the Phoenix event is active. Is the new MUDs worth it if you take one ship and two Epic and two T6? I I, I think that's a pretty, pretty pretty reasonable thing to do, Mac, personally. Uh, Nathan, I don't know. Seventeen and one, how's it going? Yeah, give me more Maelstrom variants. That's what I want. Give me uh give me some nice plasma weaponry. Yeah. So yeah, that that's the issue with the uh the Golden Gate Bridge there on the Academy map. And it's like that on both of them, so Wild Top Hat has been spotted. Whale probe in 2024? I don't know. Yeah, the Valkus has the ability to use the Romulan uh, drone ship pets off of the Scimitar. Um, and those are like the top performing hangar pets in the game. The issue is that only a few Romulan ships can use them. The Valkus happens to be one of them. Yeah. Uh, Mars industry never buy anything in stow outside of a uh, outside of a sale. Yeah, I, I hope F that there will be a bundle sale soon because I want to pick that bundle up. Yeah, I do want to get that Disco pack. I do want to ruin on a couple characters now. Um, but yeah, Mars Industry again. With anything in stow, especially bundles, never buy them outside of a sale. There, There's sales every two to three months, and that 35% off that they do on those is pretty substantial. I hope for Legendary Nebula also. I'm curious to see, so I, I think we're probably going to be getting a legendary version of the, the Dyson ship, would be my guess. So I I don't know what other ship they put in there with that. 
Am I as disappointed in the Duder stat? Um, so the friendship has redeemed itself. The the friendship is now the the go to like tank platform for very high end supported runs because the Awani console scales with Ox Power, so you can pop OSS to, to buff that up. And it's got two hangar bays. The Type Sevens. If you're doing a really high end build right now, especially in a supported environment. To be honest, if you're not bringing in a ship with two hangar bays, you're hurting your team. The, the Type 7s are that impactful that if you are playing at that level and you're not bringing in, bringing in as many of those pets as you can, you're, you're lowering the potential in the run. Spider, I picked up the all three of the ship options personally. Seventeen to one. You bought a model from Master Replica's flash drop yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, Jose. I just most of my ship builds get compressed to just one of a few characters. A legendary Connie three. That's a five three setup. Be a while before anything like that happens. Legendary Voth Citadel Dreadnought. Legendary Hapox. So let's do a run. Um, I, I do want to show too. Um, Voltic, we have not had any issues with the, the entity cap recently. Exactly, Steven. We got to... Got to get all the, the pets in there. Um, the disco pack and the 14th pack. I mean, if you had a plan for something F, then, you know, stick to your initial plan. Legendary galore. Yeah, that'd be cool. The Phoenix thing is on already, yes. Um, so if you have any Phoenix packs, you can go in and... Or, you, or if you have the Phoenix tokens, you can convert those over to experimental ship upgrade tokens, yeah. Yeah, I mean, F, you could go for, for the Mega Pack with the, the, the new one and use those upgrades, like Harmony said, to, to pick up the Atlantis and the Iwani. Those are the two most important ships from the 14th bundle. But yeah, it's the, the type seven pets are from the Awani are just crazy good. And the, the friendship, while it initially was was not the most impressive, it, it has redeemed itself over time and has been very expensive for, for myself and many others involved in the uh, the DPS race because I, I for me personally I've popped three of these so far, or is it four? It's been very expensive. I've got, yeah, because I've got this ship on casual. I've got it on Admiral Kane and SAB, so three so far. And in the end, I'll probably have it on like five characters. <sighs> Friendship is magic. So I showed this earlier, but this is what happens when you have a bunch of Type 7s in there and also a bunch of stacks of the Awani console on a do build. So here is a run that I did last night with Cannon Scatter Volley. I did not have a real-time parser up, but I'll show the parse afterwards. I should not have hit my tackle there. Like this left side just evaporated. Before my evasive was even back up, it was already just down. This was just a four man left, right. So. So when I take this thing into a split run, um, which hopefully will happen in the next couple of days, I, I think I can get a CSV build up to three mil on the ISC tables. I left the left side in this specific run at like three, seven or three, eight, Nick said. 
So if I can just go straight from left over to working on everything at the center and just skip the right side, I, I think I think three mil's doable. The Iwani console, especially when it's stacked up on a uh, on a do build like this, um, in this run I had I had four stacks of the the Iwani console on me, the one for myself and then three for my teammates. Um, I had fifteen shack, well, fifteen stacks of the the friendship trade up on me, so that's one hundred and fifty percent cat two from that. Um, that's five from each of the supporting team players, and yeah, just there, there's been a lot of power creep recently. What is doing all the lightning bolts? That is the friendship console that was hit on me. So the the lightning bolts you saw here at the start. Um, that was the, the friendship console itself. Yeah, that, that right there is the friendship console. Um, no, uh, so Sandor, it's just about the, the going back and forth is just to keep your defense stats up. Waldo, how's it going? Gotcha. Gotcha. F. Because the the friendship with the Type 7 pets is now better in a high-end environment than something like the, the Sticks. The, the Sticks is still a very good tank platform, but if you're doing very high-level play, each hangar bay of Type 7s that you can bring in is hugely impactful in a run. So the the friendship, the, the Voth Rampart, the, the Silic, those are all preferred platforms when it comes to tanks and high-end environments now that if you have a sticks the sticks is still fine but for that high level of play these other platforms are better the the friendship console cannot be used on yourself but teammates can use it on you How about the Denoas with the Type 7s? Yeah, you can certainly do that. Spider, damn. That's crazy. Now, the friendship trait, I should also mention, this can only be stacked on other players. You cannot use it on yourself. I'm going to show the parse. Yes, yes, I'm going to show the parse. Um, my copy of Oscar is bugging out right now, so I'm just going to pull it up in SCM. Bill, how's it going? Okay, so where is it? Here we go. So again, my copy of Oscar is bugging out right now. Um, there's an issue with the latest version, so I'm just looking at it here. Next War BR, thank you for the sub over on Twitch. Very much appreciated. Such sucker just picked up the new mods bundle. What ship to get from a T6 coupon at the moment to the Awani? Absolutely the Iwani. The pets on it are really good. The console on it's very good for energy weapons. In fact, the, the console off the Iwani is like the number one console you put on an energy weapon build moving forward. So for this run, that was 2.7 mil. The the VOD that I just showed you, that was left, right, infected. Um the Maelstrom Torp came out up up top, of course. But what's really surprising is resonant shock. This is the, the proc from the, the Pavo set Omni. I was running the Pavo Omni plus the console and that resonant shock from the Omni beam did 321K DPS. It was just insane that it's performing that well. Like it, it, it beat complex plasma fires on the parse, which is just nuts to me. So yeah, if you missed out on the Pavo set, um, honestly, that is a, an event that I would go buy out if you missed it, because that that reward from the defense of Pavo event, that Omni Beam, is legitimately good. Yeah, you just slot the Omni, you slot the console, and it, well, I need to clarify, if you're on a CSV build, it's going to be the best performing in that environment, because when you use CSV, the Omni Beam will get fire at will. 
if you're doing like single target beam overload, you know, beam overloads always, in a, you know, keep in mind that's an immersion firing mode. That's not necessarily a high performing firing mode when you're looking at a, you know, at it from a DPS point of view. Um, so things always are going to perform worse with beam overload, but if you're on like fire at will, or if you're on a CSV setup, this Omni is going to perform a lot better. And again, the, the Omni beam, the Omni Pov and Proton beam, when you hit cannon scatter volley, it gets fire at will at the same rank as your CSV. Uh, Phil, the only limiting factor for the friendship is the IFF manipulator off of the Silic. Um, the IFF manipulator is really impactful also in high level runs. And unfortunately, that console is still bound to that ship. I hope that someday that changes, but right now I don't appear to have it on this character, but the, the IFF manipulator console can do up to minus 400 debuff and it pretty much locks in that most of the supports in those high level runs are on Silix, but everyone's using the friendship trait in those runs right now. Yes, uh, the, the Pov and Omni is great for a, a mixed arm and synergy build, yep. But Julie, how's it going? The Iwani console is the Fleet Power Network Array. But yeah, I would say the friendship is probably like aside from the the console issue with the the Silic, the the IFF manipulator. You know, if you're ignoring that, I would say that right now the the friendship is the best support tanking platform we have because of the two hangar bays. The trade off of it is really good for buffing up your teammate that you're trying to buff up. It, it's it's a really good platform. Um, for me personally, I've 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 picked up three of the friendships so far, and there's going to be another one to two characters of mine picking it up over time. Um, uh, to cast, uh, oh, Maslin, thank you for the sub over on Twitch. Very much appreciated. X Jim, how's it going? Um, you're in the same boat on console debating Lexington, Hydra, or Phantom. The, the Hydra is going to be the top performer out of those, but I mean, the Lexington still does well, and it does have a hangar base, so you can bring in that debuff, but the Hydra is stronger than the Lexington. Watsell, how's it going? Friendship isn't in a bundle yet. It's an Infinity Lockbox ship that was released last September. No, I have not used reroute reserves to weapons. No. I, I just, I think single target builds... My my opinion on single target builds is that for for me, with the, the DPS chasing that I like to do, there just is not a place for single target builds in the current landscape of the, the DPS scene. That they just, you're, you're sacrificing so much versus CSV. I, I just, I don't, I don't look at that single target builds at all anymore. They're, they're still viable if you want to do them. You can, you know, they're, they're more than capable of getting through the content, but a lot of the end game content is AOE focused and CSV is going to blow the other stuff out of the water. Yeah, you can't do the ultimate set if you want to do. If you want to do the, uh, the Pavo. They don't work well if you're trying to go over 1.5 mil. Yeah. They also suck to fly with like if I'm doing a supported run, I know this, this is a sentiment that uh, like Nick and others hold also they're They're like the worst builds to go in and support because it's, it's such a mess. You can't have the supports, you know, moving with the DPS player rather you have to have a support staying back to clean up the mess of the things left at the, the side. 
It just isn't isn't great. Is the Marion the first 30 second ship to be put in the Muds bundle? Um I, no, no, there's been others. Uh so Phil, the 400 debuff is just on the primary target and it does uh lower based on how many it, it goes down by 40 debuff per nearby uh enemy, so if you use it at the wrong time in the run, it does nothing for you. But if you use it at a, a point in the run where there's just one big enemy, that is a lot of debuff. Yeah. Yeah, play what you enjoy. Absolutely. Is the Marion worth picking up for MUDs? If you're a Psy Torp player, I think the Marion's a, a good ship for that play style. But if you do not care about Psy Torp stuff, Probably a ship you can ignore. Nicholas, how's it going, man? Speaking of the Australian. What do I think is the best use of the Phoenix token? The the rare tokens you use for upgrades. Uh, for, the, for the Phoenix upgrades, the, the ultra rares and very rares, I would convert over to the X upgrades. Am I going to do a Marion side tort build video sometime? I don't know, Samantha. The the issue. Um, yeah, Scuba, it will impact you and your pets or the target and their pets when you hit it. Yeah, basically, Phil, or it's also used sometimes at the, the transformers on the side. Um, so the issue with the Marion side tort build, um, the variant that I'm going to be putting together is specifically catered for for like side nuking and side nuking and infected run, and those are builds. The, those side nuking builds are not builds that people should replicate because they are tailor made for one one specific situation and they suck so much for anything else. Um, you know, I might might consider doing like a more traditional side tort build on it at some point if there's interest. Might be something to do for for the Saturday stream. Um, but it wasn't something I was planning, but if there's enough interest in it, I can look at doing a more general side torp uh, build on like a stream with it. The, for the epic token, um, that's basically down to, do you want Domino off the Bajoran ship, the Protomatter Field Projector console off of the Lucari ship, or do you want, um, you know, the Cold Hearted off the Breen Plus draw? Like those are the three main contenders to look at. Yeah, the keys are bound. USI Torp, okay. Rob, how's it going, man? Um, Watts, I think, I mean, sad is fine. That's still 30 debuff from that. Um, I would say swap out your Alliance fighters for the the Type Sevens that you can get off the Iwani, and you'll probably see that your DPS goes up. Any DOS that specifically enhance CSV? Uh, nothing specific that you need to, to worry about going on uh, picking up. Pretty much just your general DOS for any any energy weapon build. No, it's two. Warp Core, it is actually two Epic Tokens. So you can, if you go into the pick three choice pack and you pick three of the Epics, um, that would be six Epic Tokens that you can get from this. Gamble stream win. Vincent Kish is only if you're doing CSV, like a, a CSV one or two for the chance to upgrade it to CSV three. But the issue with Vincent Kish is that it, it it is just a chance to activate and i found that that chance wasn't the greatest yeah there, there's plenty of time you don't have to rush and pick up the bundle now and if you you know don't feel pressured to pick up this new bundle during the sale that they have going on this sale is going on for the next two weeks but it will be back at this price during future bundle sales so if you don't want to pick it up right now don't feel pressured about it 
Nick, I know I had that there's a string of days where I just didn't feel like working on a video. I know, man. I know. I want to get those videos done. Yeah, Steel, if you have all the epic ships you care about, then basically I would just toss them in the bank and hope that someday they put some more stuff in there. Every stream, every stream is a gamble stream. Will the servers work or not? Pull that lever. Damn. The, the Nandy just doesn't really have anything going for it right now. Yeah, it's unique. It's got six bridge officer uh, stations on it. But aside from that, it just, you know, it, it's a fun ship. It just isn't the best. X gym, I would say try that out and see see how it goes for you. You see, Watts, the uh, the Type Sevens, they just apply Beta Three to everything around you. Really, really nice. Nice, congrats, Giant. Okay, let's do. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be streaming for for too too long today, um, but let's let's get some runs in. Um, who wants to go for an infected, infected elite? Yeah, Phil, uh, basically, if a ship does not have a hangar bay, we're no longer working, we're no longer looking at it um, for high end runs. Like, if it doesn't have a hangar bay, it doesn't have a place there. Super curious, how's it going? Ready when you are? Okay, old boy, let me get you an invite. Yeah, and get the elite ones from your fleet. They have attack pattern beta three, close and sensor pass three, and they have fire at will one. Give you three minutes, okay. Um, so we got old boy seventeen to one. You said you wanted in, and then Steven. For for doing random elites, um, just a general like DPS tank build is probably going to be your best bet. Um, Steven, let, let, let me bring in some, some people from the stream here and then I'll swap and we'll pick you up for, for another. Is the monitor a good carrier? It works. I think between that and the Iwani, I would probably go for the Iwani right now. Uh, Findan, what is your at handle? 1701. Let me see. I don't think I have you on my friends list. Go. No. Yeah, Majoran Interceptor is Domino, yep. Something similar. Yeah, or you just look at the, the builds Discord. There, there's a an entire tank area over there. Ryko, thank you for the follow. We all good to go? Uh, how much crit chance severity is enough? You just keep going. Keep keep stacking it up. Sounds good. See you around, Nick. Um, did I invite the wrong character? Bam girl, how's it going? Um... Raphael, do nanny runs still exist? Yes. Yep. If you want to do a high, you know, high DPS number up on the table, it is it is still very much uh, supported runs. Between those three, Phil, I think the Gorn is the most fun um, because that opens up plasma to, you know, just being a very effective uh, uh, energy weapon variant for you. Will stealth ever be a useful stat for my ship? Probably not. Everyone here good to go? Oh, it's going fine.
I want to make sure the briefing timer is available for, for everyone to see because last week it was going backwards. <laughs> Axel, are you good to go? Legendary Miranda video? Yeah, 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 I know. I am so far behind on videos I want to do. Is there a way to turn off lead on DS9? I don't think so. Okay, here we go. E6, toughly win? Ah, never. Welcome back, Red. Martin, very much appreciated. The situation there. Time for the low deeps. Angles off there quite a bit. Too far forward. Slow to move on this one. The probe is closing in on a trend. Destroy it. Bit rusty on the, the piloting there. Um, thank you all for, for the run there. How much dilithium is a healthy amount of dilithium? Uh, as much as you can get. Do we have any sales active now? Just the new MUDS bundle and the Phoenix one. Damn, bro, I thought my World Razor was doing numbers. Um, Greg. I'm not much, just picked up the new bundle. Okay, let's see what the Pavo uh, set did there. Resident Shock, I mean, still 138k from that. The, the Pavan Proton Beam wasn't that far behind my turret. Pretty good. Wasn't the best piloting-wise for me, but... That was good. Uh, the Pavan set, like, I'm telling you guys right now, if you missed the, the Pavo event, go buy it. Like, I know it's 25 bucks, but if you missed that event, the, the Omni Beam from that and the console are actually pretty good. It's one of those, those uh, sets where if you didn't pick it up, you're, you're going to regret it. So not only are you getting some event campaign progress, if you didn't play that event, you're, you're getting... A pretty decent Omni Beam, uh, set Omni Beam, and uh, Proton buffing console from that. So, definitely worth picking up if you did not play that event. Nice. Congrats, Fendan. Yeah, the Omni Beam is nuts, especially on a CSV build, because when you use CSV, the Omni Beam gets fire at will. So that Omni Beam has 
as good of uptime with fire at will as your cannons have with csv and it gets the same rank of fire at will as you have csv so if you have csv3 that beam is getting fire at will 3 for the entire time your csv is up so it's incredibly good do you need to have proton as your energy no i'm running it on a plasma build mj how's it going Okay, I'm going to swap characters. Let's get another group of people in an infected. I know Waldo, I saw you wanted to join. Steven wanted in. Uh, Steven, can you go to a tank? We'll see proper pro proton weaponry on the new T6 Dyson ship. I hope so. The, the beam is the Pavan proton one. Okay, I'm going to start up another infected here. I'm on a support. Um, Steven, can you... Can you bring a tank? Tank tuning? Okay, okay. Uh, Waldo, I know you want it in. I've got two slots left for... Uh, for... For this next run here. Waldo, do I not... Am I mistyping? I can't remember at handles anymore. Waldo, what was your at handle again? Bill, I think it is at that point where it is outperforming most of the other set Omnis, yes. I would say try it if you have it. Waldo, check it. I thought I had John here. Go. Okay, Steven. Got room for two more in an infected. Is the Phoenix update live now? Yes, it is. There's a sale right now for the Phoenix uh, stuff. Yeah, so that is the issue, Red, is that you can't run the Pavan Omni with other set Omnis, yeah. Yep, you can go to DS9 and uh, pick one up, yep. Room for two more. Does no one want in on an infected? There's a tank in here. Support. Lots of debuff. Brilliant, you want in? One more. Who wants it? Did I miss anyone earlier? Watts, okay, there we go. Sorry, Phil. Just build with watts there. Is everyone good to go? Yeah. Sorry, I've got so I've got Twitch and YouTube chats up at the same time. I just grabbed the the first handles that I saw in uh, my restream chat. Uh, I was using Viridian Plasma Cannons. Um, what type of build are people using in here? Uh, Krillian, what, what type of build are you on? Okay, let's give Krillian the uh, Awani. Give Krillian the Awanis. Is everyone good to go? Martin, thank you. Very much appreciated. Ready? Okay. Bill, thank you for the follow on Twitch also. Here we go. The Awani console stacks. So it you can have the supporting team apply it to you also. So um, we'll, we'll give you another two stacks of Awani at the start. The situation is grim. All this is the Kobayashi Maru. Warning, ship is under attack.
Flying right over to the other side. A probe is closing in on a transporter. Destroy it. I should have popped my gravel at the start. This build set up for. Not exactly left or right. Oh, you're sitting at the center? No! Rip. Activations are terrible, or were terrible in there. This build is set up for... Sensors confirm that the trend... If I'm... Th this build on this character is set up for going in to the right side immediately on an LR run and just nuking out uh, the gens over there, getting everything prepped. Any recommendations for a TOS Connie? Um, I mean, there's probably some TOS Connie builds posted in the, the builds Discord. The unknown admin, thank you for the follow. Uh, Krillian, I have you at 398. I don't know how long you were at the center there. Um, usually when you're going from left to right, you skip the stuff at the center. You worry about the, the stuff at the center when you're going to the, the gateway. I did not use my Maelstrom Torps in this run. Um, on this specific build, th this, this is a support build. It's not meant to do a ton of damage. That's also why I'm using Mark II weapons on it. Um... It's more to bring in the debuff in there, and don't know how the debuff was. I had 450% debuff there, but you think I got you at 348, Krillian, you at 311. Yeah, you just don't worry about clearing out the stuff as you move from left to right. Worry about that when we're going from the right side to the gateway, because you get that all graveled up there. Yep, you had 398k. Daily streams when? That's not going to happen. Upload for Admiral Kane? I know. 89k. So, when I'm taking this build into a more traditional, like, coordinated run, this build in an LR environment is going to go straight to the right side and it's going to take out, it's going to use those maelstroms to take out the two of the, the generators so that by the time the DPS player gets over to the right side, I've got all the spheres out already, grav weld to the right transformer with all the debuffs put there. Um, but those runs are a little bit different from, from these types of LRs.
Uh, still the same as before, the unknown admin. Um, SCM is about to be retired, though, and we're going to be moving things over to Oscar, which I talked about in some recent videos. Yeah, the, the supported... The, the support run builds could be quite a bit different from what you would traditionally see. Wonder if I happen to have any footage there. Let me make sure audio's nuked here. Um, side nuke. So yeah, in I think this is Steven, your your uh one of your runs last night. So I'll I'll debuff Wait, no, I didn't oh I applied fleet power network for you really late. I was screwing you over. So yeah, I would go straight to the right side, you know, take out some of these gens. Um and then by the time the DPS player is over here, you know, everything would be grav weld up to that transformer and all that. So like if you're doing an LR run at a very high level. Doing this this split off where you have a support go to the right side is the optimal strategy. Um, just having everything prepared over there, some of the gens down, so that the spheres are already out. This this is something we've been doing in these runs for for a while, and it's it's been very effective at boosting DPS numbers in a left to right environment. Um, big Sunday, I I believe so. Yeah, that was the, the best you went okay. So then after that, we did your... Yeah, Nick told me to get on my, my Courage, which is now going to be swapped over to the Marion. I went over, nuked the, the right side a bit slow. e did not want to go off. I kept it... My spacebar did not go off at all. Oh, no. All that debuff I was missing there. I got to change my keybinds around on that build. Yeah. Everything on the right side died, but that was your your split run. It was sloppy on my part. I just I don't know how to fly anything other than CSV nowadays is my issue. Nice. Congrats, Krillian. Top DPS tip, don't die. Oof. It uploaded so it's all good, yeah. I need to grab my free uh, Phoenix pack. So this isn't going to be, you know, the, the longest stream ever because I do need to, to go out here shortly and deal with some real life stuff. So if there's any final questions people have, you know, feel free to drop them in now. Um, I picked up the bundle. I showed clearly that you can go in and, um, you know, get all three variants of the... The, the 23rd century ships and the 26th century ships by just reclaiming it there. Um, showed that the, the Phoenix event is live, which is very nice to see. Got everything major that I wanted to do today done. What hangar pets should I use until I get the Iwani? Just use some like rare toe douche. If you have them, whatever you have now, just use them as filler. You know, if you have the T6 coupon, if you're on console and you have the, the T6 coupon from the anniversary giveaways, which are back up today, then, you know, make sure to, to go in and use that coupon. You know, you can pick up the Oani right with that coupon. If you're on, well, you're on PC, so that, that's not relevant for you. Um, yeah, I, I would say just whatever patch you have for, for, for right now. And prioritize getting the Iwani as soon as you can, because the Iwani is just crazy powerful. The Alliance Fire Squadrons, yeah, those are fine. Yeah, Stanky Boy, that was... 
back when that transfer happened, there's a, there was already talks that they were looking to sell Gearbox off. That's why they moved uh, Cryptic over in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, the, the coordinated runs, just having the debuff in there is huge. A lot of people don't appreciate just how impactful debuff can be. Um, the, the reason that the pen weapons perform so well in that phaser shootout bit that I did a, like a year back was because most people don't have any debuff that they bring in. And as soon as you bring in enough debuff, those pen weapons are devalued, which I did not clarify enough in that video, but just even that little about little amount of debuff, you know, put those significantly ahead of the other phaser variants. So when you're in a coordinated environment where you've got two to 300 debuff on everything, it, it's pretty crazy what that does for, for the DPS numbers. You know, that that's basically a real multiplier, like two, three times the damage. So debuff is important. It's why most high end builds only use attack pattern beta. It's why these type seven pets are so impactful because they bring in so many additional copies of beta beta does stack. So debuff debuff is impactful. Yeah, chops indeed. Okay. Um, who do we have streaming over on the Twitch side right now? Is there anyone here that streams on Twitch that's wanting to start up that I can uh, go raid or? Doing here. Feel the way of our presence contributes. It, it contributes a little bit, but that, that trait also has been known to cause some lag issues on it off and on. Uh, you would just use another damage mod. Um, most of my weapons are spec'd for crit D damage, damage times four right now. Crit D is fine also. Crit D is perfectly fine, but damage is a final multiplier that comes in after everything else. Terrible. Looking at the options here. Balanced power levels. I can't can't read some of the balanced power levels. Okay, this person's doing patrols. Okay, I'm gonna send the, the Twitch people over to here. Does this person also have balanced power levels? They don't. They got weapons. Okay. Okay, we're going over to Rage and Rick on the, the Twitch side of things because they uh they don't have balanced power levels. Again, thank you to everyone for, for stopping by today. And there is the Twitch side. Off. Okay, gonna bail out. So again, thank you to everyone for for stopping by today. Appreciated. I'll be doing another stream this Saturday. Might be a video tomorrow. Um, we'll we'll see how timing works out for me. But for sure, you guys will see me again this Saturday. See you guys around.